Hello again, I'm Sam B. Hansen. I've returned today to St. Peter's Church, Bournemouth, where I'm a former director of music, uh, to play a piece of my own called Variations on Picardy on the organ. Um, but first, um, I wanted to uh, show you around the building a little bit and uh, point out some of the features. Now, this is a Victorian building completed in 1879. Um, and it's got three particular claims to fame that I wanted to share with you uh, at the beginning of this video. The first is that its architect, George Edmund Street, is the same architect who went on to design the Royal Courts of Justice on the Strand in London. And we can see in this building certain architect architectural similarities, particularly if we look up here to these arches right at the top where the sun's coming through the windows. You see the, uh, the shiny pillars running up and down on the sides of the arches. I was in London, the centre of London, a couple of months ago, and I took this picture you can see now of the royal courts. And uh, you can probably see certain, different, certain uh, similarities here between uh, what we're seeing here in Bournemouth at St. Peter's and um, what street then went on to design in London, I'm fairly sure that uh, this design here in Bournemouth came first and then he went on and took that idea into London. Um, the second is that the author Mary Shelley, who wrote the novel Frankenstein, is buried in the churchyard here on the south side of the building, that's that side over there, um, and the pub on the north side over there is named after her as well, so there's, there's quite a link uh, with Mary Shelley uh, here at St. Peter's. And the third is that the composer, Sir Hubert Parry, who wrote, among other things, uh, the hymn tune, Jerusalem, and the coronation anthem, I Was Glad, was born in Bournemouth, very close to here on Richmond Hill, and baptized here at St. Peter's Church uh, shortly after his birth, so three fairly notable claims to fame that this, this place has. Um, that's the console there, it's a rather boxy object in the middle. Come around here, there's the lectern uh, where the readings are read during the service. And just come around this pillar here. There's the keyboard chapel in the corner um, off to the side. There's the front of the console, we'll see that in more detail in a moment. There's the chapel just once more. It's very ornately painted. I'm very lucky here. Um, here's the chancel with the choir stalls. You see all the, the lights lit up there um, on candlesticks. And the altar at the back over there and the window. I also wanted to show you over here the pulpit, which has a particularly clever design. This is a rather lovely angel at the front. And round the edge, you can see um, figures of the, the heads of the 12 disciples. And there are five of them here on this side, you can see. And if we come round the other side, we can see a further one, two, three, four, five, six, which is 11 altogether. And that is because the 12th one, Judas, is hiding behind the angel, for he dare not show his face. Now, I can't quite get my video camera here to, uh, to go light enough, but I did take a still photo um, with a bit of flash earlier, which you can see now, and you can see his face there um, hiding behind the angel. And then finally, over here in the corner, are the organ pipes. This is where the sound comes from, in the organ chamber over here. It's actually much bigger than, um, than the, the impression that we get from the outside. It's, it goes, um, goes quite a bit further back than that wall um, on the right of your screen now. Um, it also goes down um, into the basement and up, um, up a ladder as well. Um, there's, there's quite a lot of pipes in there. Um, but we're now gonna go over to the console and uh, see where it's all played from. 
So here I am at the console, and what we've got here is a very similar instrument to the one that I played at Wimborne Minster in video 33. We've got three manuals, three keyboards, exactly the same there, um, and 52 speaking stops. That is a stop that makes a sound when you pull it out. Um, and the Minster, before its currently ongoing refurbishment, uh, had 54, so very similar there. Um, it'll be slightly bigger when it's put back in in spring 2022. Um, but there are a few differences. Um, you may have noticed as I was walking around earlier that this is a, a mobile console. Um, it's, it's detached from the pipes, which are over there. They're all linked electrically. Um, and this console can be moved on wheels, um, usually moved for recitals to the, the front of the nave, the center of the nave over there, uh, so that the audience can see what the player is doing. Um, which can't happen everywhere um, for, for organists uh, playing organs uh, with fixed consoles. Often the, uh, the, the audience have no idea what's going on. So this is quite nice here that, that, that um, the audience can see what's happening. Um, another difference is that the bottom manual here, which was called the positive on the minster organ for its bright sparkly sounds, um, here is called the choir, which is the, the much more normal um, and regularly occurring name for the bottom manual for an organ in this country. Um, what we've got here is stops um, for accompanying the choir, the singing choir, really. So that is a smaller version of a similar stop, which I've got on the great, the middle manual. We've also got a few stops here that are of a, of a quieter solo nature. So there's a clarinet here. that there's an orchestral oboe which has a thinner reedier sort of sound um, we also have down here um, as you see a shot down here of, of the, the pedal board um, two swell pedals um, the minster only had one um, the one on the right here is for the swell which is the top manual and all the pipes for all the stops of the swell are contained in a, in a giant box with uh, shutters on the side, which can be opened and closed with my foot on this right pedal here, uh, which gives a, a swelling effect, hence the name. So if I hold a chord, there we go, closed, open again, that's it. The other one, the one on the left, is for the choir, for all the stops from here downwards, which are in another box, a separate box, also with shutters on the side does exactly the same job, but I can, con I can uh, control them independently. Um, the stops from here upwards on the choir are what we call unenclosed. They're out in the elements. They tend to be uh, the slightly bigger stops, particularly this one here, the tuba, which is the big solo stop that this organ has. It's the, um, I suppose it's this organ's answer to the orchestral trumpets that we saw at the Minster that were poking out of the, uh, poking out of the case at the front. Um, now, the, the piece I'm going to play today in this video is called Variations on Picardy. Um, I originally finished this in 2003, though I've been uh, revising it um, a bit last year, but also uh, more recently in the past few months. Um, Picardy is the name of um, an old French hymn tune or carol. It's probably 17th century. Um, and it's usually sung in this country to the words, let all mortal flesh keep silence. It's a Holy Communion hymn. Um, and in my piece, what I do first is I, I, I play uh, the hymn tune straight through um, with no variation whatsoever, um, albeit with my own harmonies underneath, underneath the tune. Um, and then there are eight variations on that tune that follow immediately afterwards, um, each with a different mood, and a different combination of stops that I'll be using. Um, and you'll see me changing the stops a little bit with these, what we call pistons here, which are all preset to different combinations and I can change them as I go. Um, so variation one uses the eight foot foundation stops of the organ, the bedrock of the organ, if you like. Um, and eight foot is, is those that sound at piano pitch. Uh, variation two is a duo. There's just two parts sounding in this one, uh, one in each hand, nothing for the feet at all, um, using the mutation stops. That's those that don't sound at concert pitch, but combined with those that do, um, so that it makes sense. 
Um, variation three is a fanfare for full organ. That's big and loud and angry. Um, variation four is a meditation, much calmer. There's uh, string stops up here for the left hand, uh, flute for the right hand here on the grate. And I've coupled a clarinet stop from the choir down to the pedal. And it's the pedal that plays the tune in that variation. Um, variation five is a fileuse. Um, this is French for spinner um, and features quickly flowing notes on a flute stop, a bit like a spinning wheel, I suppose. Um, my partner, Riona, sounds, said that this one sounds like the, uh, the dance of the electronic swans. I quite like that image. I wonder whether that works for you uh, when you hear it. Um, variation six uses foundation stops again, but this time of 16, eight and four foot pitch. Um, so it's the octave lower and higher, as well as uh, piano pitch itself for a thicker texture than what we had in variation one. Um, variation seven is a more extended adagio, it's a slow movement of the piece. And variation eight finally is a toccata or a showpiece to finish the, the whole thing off. So here it is, variations on Picardy on the organ of St. Peter's Church, Bournemouth. Enjoy.
Thanks very much for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and thanks very much to the rector of Bournemouth Town Centre Parish, the Reverend Dr Ian Terry, and the church wardens and the current director of music, Duncan Courts, uh, for allowing me to film here today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, the score of the piece uh, is available through the website shop for PDF download. If you go to samhanson.co.uk and click on shop in the top right corner of the screen, uh, that will take you to a page where you can download uh, a PDF of the score. Uh, I'll also put a, a link in the description of this video uh, to that. Um, in two weeks time, which will be Friday the 9th of July 2021, I'll be uploading what will be the last video in this regular series of, of YouTube videos to the channel. Um, it probably won't be the last ever, I'm sure, uh, but it will be the last that's being released on a, on a strictly fortnightly basis and there will be a bit of a gap over the summer. Um, and in that I'll be playing Shostakovich's Piano Concerto No. 2 in F major, arranged for two pianos. Now this is where uh, one piano plays the original piano solo part from the orchestral piece um, and the other, the other piano plays the orchestral parts arranged for a second piano and I'll be multi-tracking myself playing both parts and you'll see me on the screen twice, uh, playing twice at the same time. Um, but that's it for today, uh, thanks again for watching and see you next time. <laughs>